This is my favorite foot ascender. Notice that the aluminum bracket is broken. But it's still my favorite foot ascender. The, uh, the points are fairly aggressive, but they're not as aggressive as a Petzl. And you can securely lock it on the climbing line. Alright, so my real favorite is the CT foot ascender that's not broken. And this one will probably break in six months until CT figures out how to make this part out of steel rather than that cast aluminum. But I can plan on, this is, I've broken two now. And again, this will probably break in uh, six months. But I always have the uh, other side as a backup. But this weighs six, about 6.3 ounces, and I've spent a whole dollar so that you can get a idea of what the size is. This is the camp. It's got the rollers, and the rollers are cool, but in reality, how much friction do you have against the rope in a horizontal configuration. There's not that much friction. There is a hole right there, so if you want to lock it on, you can reach down and put a carabiner in there and lock it on. It opens very well. Once it's on the line, it'll go up the line very easily, but I found that it comes off too easily for me without having to concentrate a lot on my technique. Uh, with a knee ascender, it comes off too easily. Again, after going through great expense, this weighs in at 4.75 ounces. So those are the those are the rollers, and you can see that they line right up with the with the body in there, but they they will hit the rope before the body does. I have some other thoughts for this, but we'll save those for later. This is a configuration they show in the, uh, the manual. I don't think it's that useful, but if you wanted to do some kind of hauling with a progress crapshire up to 50, um, 50 kilograms, I think, and of course you'd probably take the strap off, but it's really not that smooth. I don't no, but anyway, that's one configuration. But at any rate, if you have no restrictions going up your rope, in other words, your ascender is way up here and you have all kinds of room, when you step up, it's pretty easy to let your step be in line with the rope. The issue is when you put in a knee ascender. Now, when you have the knee ascender installed, the issue is more than technique because when your foot comes up, the tendency is if your foot comes up and it's not completely aligned with the rope, it opens the ascender. So you have to make sure in your technique that you are always pushing against the rollers or that your foot comes all the way straight up. Again, if it comes off to an angle a little bit, it can come off. It's it's a cool ascender, but this is the same thing with a Petzl and with the Camp and the Kong. It doesn't have. Now you could put a carabiner in here, but if you're putting a carabiner in here, you might as well be going with a CT uh, foot ascender with the auto lock. So, in fact, you could put a you could put a carabiner in there. Who wants to climb like that, though? I mean... Anyway, so now the restriction is right here. You have, to, you have to make sure that your foot stays completely lined up with that ascender while you're going up, otherwise it just comes off. And you don't have that restriction so much when you have a lot more rope, and the flexibility of the rope gives more movement. It just makes it... It just comes off easier because this is a restriction. It keeps it 
as the closer I get to this, the more it has to stay lined up. Again, though, if you're pushing against the rollers all the time, then that does help. That does come up pretty easy, though. Look at how that feeds through without any without any weight on that tail. That line feeds through pretty darn easy. This is the pestle. Again, I always have a backup, and that is uh, the new pestle. You can't lock on there. You can't put a carabiner in there, and this comes off really easy for me with the knee ascender. And the teeth on this, I don't know if you can really see that very well. I took some other pictures, but the teeth are extremely aggressive. And I suppose for a rock climber, if you're doing icy ropes and things like that, that's really important but for me it comes off pretty easy and that might add to a little picking on the rope but I don't think the picking is picking a rope is not that much of a problem for me I get more wear on a branch than I do from these but that's the pantene or the pencil I'm not sure if you say pantene or pantin how do you say it <laughs> I say Pantene, but I think I've heard some people say Pantene. Good question. I don't know. So anyway, weighing this is going to cost me a whole dollar again. And it comes in at a whopping 2.7 ounces. So pretty small. Now, this is the old pencil. And again, it has pretty aggressive teeth. But it has the hole so that you can put a carabiner and lock it on the line. But it's kind of a pain to reach down and lock those on the line. But at least it has the hole. And it weighs a whopping 4.75 ounces. This is the Kong. It's got a hole for a carabiner. And I'll post a link for it. But one of our fellow climbers has posted a video of how he's ingeniously put a little connector here and a, a metal object that goes down the little ball on the top so he can pull up and lock that and it'll lock against the rope when the ball gets in there. I'll put a link in there for the video but that's pretty cool but this um, with that little ball would be pretty good. It's also got this little bracket that helps keep it centered on your boot and the uh, the teeth on this are not aggressive at all. It's got it's got some really great teeth on it. They're they're pointed, but they're not uh, real long and pointed, so they won't pick your rope as bad. Um, I think I think with the little ball that JB's got on there is um, might be a good option. And this one weighs. Whoops! Oh crap! Lost my dollar. This one weighs 4.75 ounces. This is a CMI. Again, I have a backup. But this you'll never break. And the teeth on here are not aggressive at all. They're really good on the rope. And it also locks in on the rope so you won't have the rope come out. I think these are pretty much indestructible. You might eventually wear out the strap and have to re wear, replace the strap, but this would probably last a lifetime. The only thing is, I should probably get a $20 bill to measure it because the thing's as big as a brick house and it weighs 10.7 ounces. It's interesting to me that the one with the most material costs the least. That's like, that's like $20 less. That's like $20 less than this little guy. But I don't know. You know, and when you're standing in a crotch and stuff like that, the only thing is that just gets in the way a lot. It kind of is uncomfortable if you're standing in a narrow crotch. Other than that, it's an awesome foot ascender. So that's the CT. Of course, you have to open it up. But I just don't find it that difficult. To reach down and open it up. I'm not as limber as a lot of guys, but that doesn't take much.
All right, so this is the Kong, and it feeds through the rope pretty easy too. And you can see if you're just going up with one foot, it's pretty easy to keep. All right, the distance between the foot ascender and where the unisender is, is a long way. And so when Judy takes a step, go ahead and take a step, that can come up and it's not so critical. Let me see the foot ascender again. Keep going, take another step. See, now it's not so critical because it doesn't come up right next to the knee ascender. It has five feet of rope to run through before it gets pulled off. That was a good step. You could really see it. Good one. Another good step. So that works really well in a frog walker. But when you get it next to a knee ascender, it just wants to come off. <laughs>